There we are. Tom Hardy and Joel Egerton, right? Okay. Yep. Okay. Go ahead, start. Okay, this is old Cam. And this is not a spring chick. And this is our review of Warrior. Yeah, and uh, you know we know the movie has been out and uh, out and gone from the theaters already, but um, this was. Uh, it was already in the theaters and out. It was in the theaters. Had a two week run, I think. Didn't make lost a fortune, and uh, there's reasons why it lost a fortune, which we'll talk about. But um, uh, it's in the Academy Award screening series. They're they're talking about Hardy and Everton as being you know legitimate. Oscar actors, but it's Nolte who they're really pushing, folks. Well, that's because Nolte showed up for the Q&A. Yeah, and the <laughs> others didn't, tell. so. They're both coming. Oh, Look yeah, at that. I think we were out in the marina today. We thought we should yeah. a glimpse of Well, that. because the movie does take place in Pittsburgh. Well, which they is do a, have some ocean. They actually, they, saw, they had the beach over at Atlantic City. Yeah, so they were Atlantic City and Pittsburgh, so you did have water. So these two movies, or actually this one movie about the war. Now, one of the things I, I was kind of surprised about is this is another one of the movies where the two leads at, were from another country. Oh, I know. About American boxers. It's just, um... Well, oh, actually, American MMA. It was about American MMA. Uh, and mixed martial mixed arts. Mixed mixed martial arts, which they, um... The, basically, that seems, from what I understand, is the main problem, one of the main problems of the movie is why in the heck couldn't you find somebody from the United States to play the two lead roles? But when you took a look at why those two... Well, because they've done other work for the same company that produced the movie. Mm -hmm. So, and they thought that, okay, they were trying to put it out that these, uh, okay, actors would have, they weren't named, so they'd have no um, pull whatsoever to bring audience in. Well, they were absolutely right. They had no pull to bring audiences in. Yeah, but they're also international actors, so you think they'd have some pull somewhere else. I know, but they had no pull. They only made three million out of this country in a multi-week release, so, which was not a uh, uh, guy's boat is sinking over there. So the movie is about the, the father, yeah, otherwise known as Moby. Actually, he's not Moby. I uh, know, known as Moby Dick. You have to watch the movie to understand about it. Yeah, whose whose sons? Well, actually, one of them returns from a mysterious past. Who they didn't know what happened to him. He shows up mysteriously at his doorstep at night, knocking on the door. Well, well considering by the ages of everybody, it had to be like twenty years later. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, really, a long time later because the the younger son who people have misidentified as the older son was 16 years old when the brother left and now he's got a wife he's went to college he's got a wife a family a mortgage you know he's, he's getting up there in age folks mm -hmm. he really is and then the other one who comes back he basically it's like it's never really explained why he comes back uh it makes no sense because he came back oh yeah uh, i think that the director said it had to he came back to uh to basically stick it to his father. Oh, yeah, because he shows up at his father's doorstep and basically says, I'm here, I don't want to talk about anything. Yeah, just, don't bother me. Don't bother me, I just want to train. I know, There's a, there he is up again out there. So, I know, but uh, he didn't want to even train. He just wanted, to, when he showed up on the door, it was basically to get a, he brought a gift of alcohol to a father who was an alcoholic and couldn't drink. And who had been alcohol free for a thousand days. Yeah. Of course he didn't know that. Yeah, he thought he was going to just get him drunk and basically, you know, criticize him. And so he criticized you without being drunk, so. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they emphasized too much on the family relationship in this movie? Oh, there was no family relationship. Oh, none. in other words? And there's more seal here, Mark. I, can, you can hear. I mean, to me, it was really kind of sad seeing, I mean, the father who obviously had been a drunk before yeah um and had estranged the family well the, the trick is the father it was really kind of sad watching how they treated him yeah they treated him with total and absolute disrespect whereas he and was contempt. in contempt but you know and uh and if you listen carefully it was the mother that caused most of the problems the mother was a religious fanatic and the husband wasn't mm -hmm. which but then the husband became a religious fanatic figuring that may, you know what I did was wrong. No, he was an Irish. Uh, Irish tend to be okay. Uh, they have oh, go look at the old honeymooner shows with um, 
with Ralph Cram than and his wife Alice because that was the relationship that Irish men tend to have with Irish women. Oh, really? Yeah, it's basically, it often is an abusive relationship, but like, my grandmother was from Ireland. I'm really from Ireland. My grandmother would kick the ass of my grandfather if he tried to do anything, which is what Irish women tend to do a lot also. Ah, oh, that's an Irish spunk. Yeah. But, you don't, the, but you, the young Tommy takes off with his mother. Yeah, right? and, the, and the younger brother should, was supposed to go with him, but uh, he had to stay with the girlfriend. No, he didn't. No, he didn't marry her for years. He didn't have to stay with the girlfriend. He just basically chose to stay and be with the girlfriend and live with his father, whom he supposedly despised, and yet he stayed with the father so he could stay with, so he could stay with the girl, which made totally no sense in the movie either. If you don't like your father, then why are you staying there to go out with a girl? Yeah. Oop, we just lost one of them. Oh, one of them just took off? The, the boy just dumped into the water. He's tired of sitting there with the girl. So, here's, here's the challenging part is, when we first started watching this movie, you knew what the ending was going to be right at the beginning. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Ooh, look at that. Whoa. Yeah. Well, because I, it's basically, it's, just, it's a bloody standard movie. That's how it's uh, it's how it always is. You're going to have the two brothers fighting at the end, fighting to the end. That part was predictable. And that the one one brother is going to basically uh, surrender so that the other brother can win. There was no, okay, uh, everything was totally, I mean, the, the fighting was good, but the fighting was totally irrelevant to the movie, which is funny. There was no it's need. It's a of, movie about... <laughs> There's a movie about relationships that had nothing to do with the, you know, and they picked a bad topic, MMA, because nobody like, you know, MMA has got an audience, but it, it's sort of like Formula Drift. Formula Drift has a really strong audience, but and that's not, the audience they have. It's it's, that's the audience you. Yeah. So there's not enough people that watch MFA to want to come to a movie about MMA. If they'd have basically had them, go, okay, the, um, the director was talking about how the fact that. He admired, he grew up admiring the Rocky movie. Mm. And because of that, he basically staged a movie like Rocky, which had ah. none of the redeeming things that Rocky had in it, none of them. Well, you know, the underdog does, uh, I mean, basically the other guy, his um, his coach basically says, you have a better chance of getting in a boy band yeah. than winning. Okay, it's just totally, I mean, we're talking, Rocky was an athlete, I mean, a really good athlete and made himself better. The guy, Brendan, was not a good athlete and therefore couldn't have made himself better. You know, he nearly got killed the last fight he had. Mm -hmm. He was with the organization and he nearly got killed because he couldn't defend himself. And, you know, and this is a guy that's a human punching bag out there for every, every fight he's in, he nearly gets killed in every fight. Mm -hmm. You basically, you throw, if you're a coach, you throw in the towel before that guy gets killed. Yeah, his wife did say something about him being a human punching bag, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. and that was that's not it. And I mean, it, everything is impossible. He's losing his house. He has to have the money to pay for the house, so he quits his job. He quits fighting on weekends where he was a uh, he couldn't lose because even that he even though he was not a top rung MFA fighter, he was still better than anybody else he was going up against. So he quits that to take a flyer on winning five million dollars and doesn't make any money for like, he had three months to be able to save his house, so he spends three months training for a five million training, and then he doesn't know why he's, you know, going to jump, he didn't know he was going to be the five million dollar bout until the guy that conveniently gets hurt that was going to be in the thing, so naturally, they allow the guy that hasn't fought in the ring for ten years to come in and substitute for him, mm -hmm. like that would ever happen, folks. Yeah, they usually have a pecking order. Have, there's, there's a few things that are... Well, there was no not, elimination battles going on. Well, actually, wasn't the thing for the fight that there was, this was like no elimination? It's like you fight, you No, but you had out. to have an elimination to get into the fight. There was no, um, there was no, you know, no elimination bounce to get people into the oh, final into the group. Five, yeah, so ten. that would have happened. That just didn't happen with this. I mean, it basically, it was a badly written movie trying to make social social points when they shouldn't have been doing it. I mean, but from a viewer's standpoint, it was actually, um, it, yes, it was predictable, but it, it pulled you into the story. And it was actually a much better movie than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Well, they'd had, you know, they'd had some Irishmen playing the Irish. It might have been nice, other than Nolte. There was, Nolte was the only Irishman playing out there. We got one guy that's basically specialized in Italian parts that looks like Robert Forrester. And the other guy, this is from Australia, that basically played Gwaine in King Arthur. 
mm. you know. So I mean, they're athletes, but they're not athletes that way, and they should never have been cast. You should have cast um, um, you should have cast athletes that were actors instead of actors that made into athletes. Because I, I can tell you absolutely, it looked like the guy playing Brandon was going to die every time he got into oh, a fight. Oh, you know what? He did. I mean, he <laughs> totally was so out of his league. You could see it in his face that there was. Well, and then the one fight when he's up against um, the Japanese, uh, actually no Russian, uh, yeah. was it uh, Kobu? Kobu was it? Yeah, Kobu. Yeah. Which was Kurt Angle, who actually yeah. is an Olympian. Yeah. And he looks like he's like outweighed like a good 30 to 40 pounds. Well, it's supposed to be for the middleweight championship of the world. And these guys look like they was, half of them are as big as I am, and I'm well over 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. So, but, so um, was there anything that you did like in this movie? Well, Nolte's performance was Nolte. That's yeah. the problem. Is that, uh, I, I, okay, it was a bad topic to have picked. It was made... I don't know where they put the $30 million they credited for. It was not in the movie. It was, it was shabby photography, shabby sound. You know, everything about the movie had the reeking of a, a, a cheap-ass movie. But it's basically it's an anti-American movie with an anti-American sentiment with, with people that basically aren't Americans in the lead. So it was, means it's going to be an Academy favorite, folks. <laughs> no, it was anti-banks. Even though the banker said, you know, we, you know, if you declare bankruptcy, you don't have to, you know. Basically, you can save it. You can save everything by declaring bankruptcy. And he's like, no, we don't do no, that. No, we don't do that. Well, yeah, the Irish do that all the time, folks. That's the Irish. Because the Irish basically is to, you, know, you move on to tomorrow, in which that wasn't this guy's. Well, let's see. He, he's got his wife out basically wearing a micro mini, a micro dress uh, bar, you know, as a barmaid. He's been working as a bouncer, doing fights at night, but he's too proud. Uh, let's put it this way. If you're so proud, you don't put your wife in an outfit that shows her rear end all the time. Mm -hmm. See, well, there's obviously some things that don't make sense. Well, no. Is that, okay, the guy, the gentleman that basically did it, the, uh, he's also an actor, you know, uh, Gavin O'Connor. He should have known better about the Irish because he is Irish. He's done a couple of other first-rate uh, movies about athletes. He did Miracle, you know, the, the Kurt Russell movie where they're doing about the Olympic Games, the, the team that come out of nowhere. But the problem is, is most of these guys, including Russell, were all hockey players. Oh. Yeah, Russell was an amateur hockey player, and Russell plays, am plays amateur hockey now. So these people all knew what they were doing. It was about a topic that was popular. MMA wrestling is only... It basically, it made 18 point some million worldwide that's probably the total audience outside of Japan well, came to see the movie and I love when, in the Q&A that followed the movie with uh, Gavin O'Connor and Nick Nolte yeah. I loved it's like um, when oh. Nick basically tells Gavin that Tom snowed him he, yeah he really played him he said he wanted he, I said yeah Tom does he said Tom does um, um, you know, auditions. Tom does good auditions. He doesn't do it. Yeah, he does a lot. He's done a lot of auditions. He's really good. He's he's really good at it. But he's really bad at it. That's why he couldn't do it. Yeah. I know because Tom told told the director. He says, "No, I can't do auditions." Well, why don't I come and see you instead? Yeah. And then instead of showing up on Monday, he shows up what Sunday at midnight. Midnight. But then there's and all, then stays for five days. Yeah, until he got the role. I wonder if he got that from... Uh, yeah, <laughs> Nolte pointed out the same thing. He said he did the same thing on Down Out in Beverly Hills. Uh, Mike Mazurki didn't like Nolte, period. And he just kept he kept hanging on to him. Rehearse. He kept auditioning for him, you know, reading God Awful Bad, which he said was really a bad script. He just kept going over it. And finally, you've got the role. Just let me leave. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it, it's their own way of breaking him down to get the role. Yeah, no. Well, you know, for actors, you know, sometimes they say whatever it takes. I've heard some crazy things that actors do to get roles. Oh, yeah, most of the time, you know. I thought, well, I think what he said last He did say something about harassment last night. He said that's how you get jobs in Hollywood. So, yeah. so he didn't understand what the big deal was. That's how you get jobs in Hollywood. You know, so it, um, no, he was in fine form last night. You know, he was, you know, his, uh, over the years, his throat has gotten, he always had a husky voice, but the years have not been kind to his voice. Whereas, you know, if you look at the movie, the Nick Nolte on the movie was close to being the Nick Nolte you remember. He still had a you know, ruggedly good looking with that raspy voice, but the Nolte that we were seeing last night, which was two years after the movie was made, is a much older and, uh, I don't know why, 
my friend Chick was making, and she was making the point that the fact that, you know, you're older than he is, and look at him. Well, yeah, I'm older than a lot of people that are in the room, and most of them were having to have assistants to get around. <laughs> you know, they, 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 they don't lead a very good life. No, but he is, uh, he's, he's, okay, yeah, like he was uh, mostly reined in, but he was allowed to let himself loose on one part of the movie, which was a crucial part of the movie. That, that was a crucial part. That was the uh, hotel scene when they were in between bouts. Yeah, and uh, his son had finally got what he wanted, was to get Dad drunk, but he didn't, when he got Dad drunk, as they said, he really discovered that wasn't what he really wanted, because he felt sorry. It was the only time in the entire movie he felt sorry for anybody except for feeling guilty in another scene about the death of a, of a Marine. But you almost, yeah, you see the vulnerable side of him. Yeah, he did feel that he did, he pushed the envelope too far to get what he wanted. But, uh, you know, uh, Melville's Moby Dick plays a very important role in the movie, which I'm guessing they didn't really think was that important a thing until people started pointing out, uh, you know, like in the drunk scene at the end, he's doing... Um, he, he, they said he's not Mel, he's not a Captain Ahab, he is Moby Dick. He's the great white well that's basically consumed everybody mm -hmm. and will never give an inch, which is an Irish father. An Irish father, you know, not, only, not only an Irish father, this was an Irish uh, trainer, you know, an athletic trainer who basically can't give an inch because if he does, I mean, like you're telling his son, um, he said, you're in my, you're going to be in my house, you're going to follow my rules, you're going to eat. You're not going to eat this crap. This is for yeah. old guys and people that are out of shape. That's right. You're going to live here, and I'm going to follow everything you're, you're doing. And um, pass me over what you have in your pockets because you sound like a Morocco when you walk through the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was it because you know, his son took drugs to keep himself going. Actually, I'm guessing he's popping steroids and everything else, too. I know. Because I he is really overly muscled. And well, he, he brings one out, and he says, and then Nick Nolte says, I heard more than one. Yeah, and then, I, yeah, and then the, pass it over. I heard three. Yeah, there was a ching, ching, ching when you came through the door. <laughs> but, um, uh, but, you know, Nolte, um, they're not doing, they're not doing uh, O'Connor for an award, and they, they know there's no chance of the two uh, foreign actors because they're going to have. They, they said it's a lock. The foreign nomination is going to go to the gentleman who was an artist because he's winning all the best actors awards. Yeah, so but it's Nolte. Supporting actor Nolte. Nolte. Because Nolte is. Old.